He dismissed the conference and told the people to go to their homes, the women to gather blankets and food and other things, the men to get their teams in order and their wagons. He wanted good, fast teams to move as, just as quickly as they could out to these beleaguered peoples in the, on the highlands of what is now Wyoming. They were scattered all across that state from Casper to the east to the Continental Divide to the west when they were found. Wagon teams loaded with food and bedding left immediately to rescue the stranded handcart pioneers. Tuesday, October 7th, about 50 men and 24 horse wagons with 10 ton of flour with other provisions and clothing left the city. Reddick Newton Allred, rescue party. This was a severe day. The wind blew awful hard and cold. The ascent was some five miles long and some places steep and covered with deep snow. They became weary, sat down to rest and some became chilled and commenced to freeze. Levi Savage, Willie Company. It took 14 days to reach the Willie Company, stranded near Rocky Ridge. More wagons rode on to reach the Martin Company. As we looked ahead, lo and behold, we saw a wagon coming, and it was close. Such a shout as we raised in camp I never before heard. It came from the hearts of the faithful saints who felt their lives was in the hands of their God. Joseph B. Elder, Willie Company. The brethren turned over to me flour, potatoes, onions, and a limited supply of warm clothing. Quilts, blankets, buffalo robes, woolen socks. That evening, for the first time in quite a period, the songs of Zion were to be heard in the camp. The change almost seemed miraculous. Among the brethren who came to our succor were elders W.H. Kimball and G.D. Grant. How bravely they worked to bring us safely to the valley, to the Zion of our hopes. John Chislett, Willie Company. Rescuers found the handcart pioneers of the Willie Company strung out for miles. They picked up one load of emigrants who could walk no farther, brought them to camp, and then went out on the trail for more. Still, one morning, 13 were dead in camp. Two more died during the day. Many in the rescue party pressed on to assist the other stranded companies. The passage of the Sweetwater was the worst river crossing of the expedition. The water was not less than two feet deep, intensely cold, the ice was three or four inches thick, and the bottom muddy or sandy. Four members of the relief party waded the river, helping the handcarts through and carrying the women and children and some of the weaker men over. John Jacks, Martin Company. in camp tonight. Robert Burton, relief party. About noon on November 9th, 1856, the relief wagons carrying members of the Willie Company pulled into Salt Lake City. Within hours, these destitute pioneers were taken to homes to be fed, housed, and nursed. company, bolstered by relief teams, now was back on the trail, headed for the valley. Fifty-six did not make the journey, buried as best they could be in the frozen ground at Martin's Cove, where they had sought some sanctuary from the terrible conditions. 
My husband had for several days previous been much worse. I put him to bed. He seemed to rest easy and fell asleep. I slept until, as it appeared to me, about midnight. It was extremely cold. I listened to hear if my husband breathed. He lay so still. I could not hear him. I became alarmed. I put my hand on his body, when to my horror I discovered that my worst fears were confirmed. My husband was dead. He was cold and stiff, rigid in the arms of death. There was no alternative but to remain alone by the side of the corpse till morning. Of course, I could not sleep. I could only watch, wait, and pray for dawn. Elizabeth Horrocks Jackson, Martin Company. Passing through Echo Canyon, Sarah Squire, eight and a half months pregnant, gave birth to a baby girl. With no extra blankets or clothing, one teamster in the rescue party took off his coat, his shirt, and then removed the top half of his long-handled underwear with a knife. Little Echo Squire had a blanket. Both mother and baby survived the final stretch. November 30th, 1856. We arrived in Salt Lake Sunday noon. It was like the Israelites of old, beholding the promised land. Langley Allgood Bailey, Martin Company. Wagon trains had been assigned to follow the handcart companies and assist them on the trail. Behind the Martin and Woolley parties were the Hunt and Hodgett wagon companies. They too faced the desperate conditions. We arrived in Salt Lake City at nine o'clock at night, the 11th of December, 1856. My mother was dead in the wagon. Early next morning, Brother Brigham Young and a doctor came. When Brigham Young came, he shook hands with all of us. When he saw our condition, our feet frozen and our mother dead, tears rolled down his cheeks. Mary Goble Pay, Hunt Company. The doctor amputated Mary's toes with a saw and a butcher knife while the women dressed her mother for burial. The memory of her faith and her life uh, fills me with immense gratitude. What she did for her children and her children's children lives on in my life. Uh, as a descendant, I haven't had the experience and don't expect to have the experience of crossing the last fork of the Sweetwater in freezing weather, losing loved ones right and left. But I do have days when, that require courage. And when I hear those stories of Mary and of others, it buoys me up. The handcart episode uh, with, the, with the tragic aspect of it for the travelers and the heroic aspects of it for the rescuers are so impressive and which suggests to me that the true Mormon trail did not lie on the prairie itself on the ground, but within the spirit. Perhaps their suffering seemed less dramatic because the handcart pioneers bore it meekly, praising God instead of fighting for life with the ferocity of animals and eating their dead to keep their own life beating, as both the Fremont and Donner parties did. Assuredly, the handcart pilgrims were less hardy, less skilled, less well-equipped to be pioneers. But if courage and endurance make a story, if human kindness and helpfulness and brotherly love in the midst of raw horror are worth recording. This half-forgotten episode of the Mormon migration is one of the great tales of the West and of America. Wallace Stegner. More than 200 died in these companies. <laughs> 